Welcome to Wildlife Online. Some of the biggest factors in affecting the climate of the world is the jet streams. There are four main jet streams in the world. One that is near the polar region in the north called the polar jet stream. One that's somewhat further south above the equator which is called the subtropical jet stream. And then in the southern hemisphere we have a pair to resemble what we have in the northern hemisphere, a subtropical jet stream, and then further to the south, closer to the pole, a polar jet stream. Now what are jet streams? Well, jet streams are huge tubes of air that are quite a few kilometers up in the troposphere. You can see here, here's a picture of, well, a primitive drawing of a, one of those tubes of air. And notice that the wind speeds in those tubes are fairly large. The wind speed increases as you get closer to the center of the tube and decreases as you go further out to the edges of the tube. Typically, a jet stream like the polar jet stream can have speeds of 100 miles an hour towards the edge and as much as 160 miles an hour towards the center and even greater than that. And there's four of those that kind of meander around the world. Now, when we say meander is because their position is constantly changing. There's always loops that go in. Sometimes there's kind of like a break in the loop. They come far south, they go far to the north. And also they're constantly moving in various directions. And while they do that, they carry with them very large air masses, highs and lows, region in the, in the atmosphere where the pressure is high, where the pressure is low. And so when these jet streams meander around, they take very large air masses, both very warm air masses and very cold air masses, and move them around to the north, to the south, vastly changing the temperature of the troposphere and near the surface of the Earth by tremendous numbers. We'll have some videos to show you what kind of effect those, those jet streams can actually have on the surface. Now it turns out that in the summer the jet streams move somewhat slower, have typically wind speeds of about 100 miles per hour, which is about 160 kilometers per hour. And in the winter time, they become a lot more active with much stronger winds and much higher speeds, with speeds as much as 120 to 240 miles per hour, which is quite a bit, especially when you see the numbers in kilometers per hour. Now notice that the polar jet streams tend to be low in elevation. That's probably because near the north and south pole, the troposphere doesn't go up as high as it does near the equator. So when you go further down, the, the subtropical jet streams tend to be higher in elevation near the top portion of the, of the troposphere. The tropical jet streams tend to be low, slower, meaning slower in wind speed. The polar jet streams tend to be faster, have faster wind speeds. And typically, the polar jet streams, when they swing down, and they sometimes swing quite a ways down, thousands of miles downward, they bring masses, super large masses of very cold air very far south, with the result that regions that normally don't see very cold temperatures can get extremely cold for a period of time, for days, maybe up to a week, until that air mass moves on to a different location. Sometimes subtropical jet streams, they go way up north, and they, they swing back down, pushing the cold air masses up and bringing into its place very warm air masses, moving very warm air or relatively warm air to places farther north than you typically would see. So sometimes in Chicago or in very northern cities like in Minnesota, temperatures could easily reach 50, 60 degrees in the winter time because that large air mass that moves up also, in reverse, sometimes the polar jet streams bring very cold air with temperatures below zero, Fahrenheit, 20, 30 degrees below zero Celsius, way far down in areas where you normally don't see those temperatures. So the jet streams around the world, the four main jet streams, make an enormous effect, an enormous difference in the way the temperature will vary in various regions of the world. And this is a constantly ongoing thing. There's changes that happen over time that does cause temperatures to be unusually cold or unusually warm from decade to decade and even throughout uh, from century to century. So we'll see some examples of how that affects the climate. But at least you can't not really talk about the temperature of the troposphere and how energy is stored and how energy moves through the troposphere without considering the enormous effect jet streams have on the temperature of the troposphere and on the climate of the world. And this is why.